We have a broad yellow warning for snow across northern England, extending down towards the North Midlands and covering mid and northern parts of Wales. So as actually been forecast, yellow weather warnings for snow and ice in this area and 65 miles per hour gusts on some of the highest peaks. The snow I'm looking forward to, so hopefully we do get some of that later on. However, the wind, I'm hopefully gonna find somewhere a little bit sheltered because I fancy actually getting a little bit of sleep tonight. This is more like it already. Nice bit of snow. And a tea bag. You could call it iced tea, couldn't you really? Leave no trace though, guys, come on. It's gonna be pretty much white out when we get up here. Makes the paths a lot less visible. There we are. That's a summit cairn if I've ever seen one. There we are, Nabscar Summit. The first worm right of the day. And there won't be many more worm rights today. Right, I've got a plan, hopefully you can hear me. I'm gonna look for somewhere to pitch now, even though I'm not gonna pitch up yet. Just scope out an area, get an idea of where I'm gonna pitch up later on. Then we'll go back another worm right and come back this way and pitch here. That way, if it starts getting late on, we already know where we're going to pitch, so we can just smash the tent up and get some shelter. I've seen a few pictures down there, and there's a lot of sheep. The sheep usually know where the sheltered spots are. The forecast says we've got an easterly wind, so I need to keep the summit of this mountain to the east, so that it can offer me some protection. I feel like I've found a good little spot here. The winds aren't too strong. The sheep are here, so that has to be a good sign. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mark this location on my map, this exact spot, the coordinates. I'm gonna go back this other way and right, and then I'll come back here. Yeah, definitely much more sheltered down there. I have got my snow goggles in my bag, so I might have to put them on. It's just going straight behind my glasses. It's all right until that wind comes. And it's not the snow that's coming down, it's the snow that's on the ground. That's just getting swept about by the wind. <laughs> First time I've had to actually use these. But yeah, that's much better. I had to get some really big ones that fit over my glasses. It's easy to forget to drink when the weather's cold because you don't feel like you need to drink as much but you're still getting dehydrated so it's important to keep drinking. That's actually my first drink since I set off which is not good so it's important to keep hydrated. So I'd say the Met Office got it pretty accurate when it comes to the snow and ice. Let's just hope they overestimated those wind gusts. But so far it's not too bad but they are supposed to pick up later on. But hopefully we'll be tucked up nice and safely in the solo by then. As the paths become less visible, it's important to pay attention to the cairns and double check back on your map every now and then. Make sure you're at least heading in the right direction because it's quite easy to just lose the path ever so slightly. So you need to keep checking back so you can get back on track. Oh, that's strong now. 
proper sick out here. Definitely frozen up here. Well, this is what we came for. This is why I set my alarm for five o'clock this morning to get up to the lakes before that snow caused carnage on the road. And we made it up here. Yes, mate. Proper winter conditions. Loving this. I'm at the summit of Heron Pike. Crazy weather. Oh. So the wind buff that goes round the GoPro is just frozen. All the moisture's got on it and just frozen solid. So no wonder batteries drain very quickly. Right, I can't hang about here for too long. Need to keep moving. So it's half past 12. I've got a decision to make. Do I head back towards Nabskar? Jesus. Do I head back towards Nabskar and set up camp? Or there is one more mountain to climb. It's about an extra two miles on the route called Great Rig. And it's a Wayne ride that I've not done. There's not much ascent according to the map. So I think I'm gonna go bag that. There's enough time. And worst case scenario, if I don't feel I can get there, I can just turn back round because it's an out and back this sort of route, not a loop. So let's go for it. Next stop, Great Rig. summit I think that's the summit right I'm just off the summit of Great Rig I'm making a mental note to myself to go left as you're coming back down because that looks very similar to that and it'll be quite easy once I get on summit to get disorientated and start following a path which is going in the wrong direction which wouldn't be good I've just stopped here just off the summit because I'm just out of the wind so I'm just having a little bit of a break from it and then I'll crack on, get up there and then we can start heading back to that spot and get this tent pitched. What an absolute epic day out so far, honestly. Very testing, not gonna lie, not very easy walking in this sort of blizzard conditions. Challenging but fun, nevertheless. Yeah, there. I found some form of life form. Right, still pretty much crazy conditions. I've just found a little spot where the wind's not quite as bad. I've not done much recording going back to Nabskar. I'm just sort of in between Heron Pike, is it called? Heron Pike and Napscar. So we're nearly there now. Looking forward to getting this tent pitched and getting a nice warm drink on. I've drawn for trekking poles as well, just for stability. Oh man, sheep. Don't move for me, lads. Right, back at Napscar Summit. So I just need to drop down now and find that place I wanted to pitch. And hopefully it's out of the wind. Right, I found that spot. Let's get this bloody tent up, eh? This seems like an all right spot right here. 
and boom there we are all pinched up Hilleberg solo black label so the wind is sort of coming from that direction which is the east I've got the foot end of the solo which is the most aerodynamic end facing the wind so hopefully we shouldn't have too many problems Get into some warm gear as well. Change my gloves. Put some fresh ones on. Yeah, it's still snowing. Looking like an epic camp. So when I've done a big mission like that, in weather like that, it's nice to get out of all your wet gear. Well, not really wet, but you know what I mean. The damp gear from hiking, your sweaty gear and all that. Get into some down gear. I like to lug in my bag for half an hour just to nicely warm up. I've actually brought a bivy bag with me as well. It is the Alp Kit Hunker XL. Be interesting to see if I get sort of any condensation inside it. I remember using a bivy ones before, it's like a cheap one. And it won't breathable at all. So in between my sleeping bag and the inside of the bivy. You just piss wet through. Got a little chocolate waffle. Not like a quick little energy boost. I got a couple of these. It was supposed to be for my pudding, but just need a bit of scram just to get some energy back. Bloody all the frozen, man. So my fingers. So over week, I were asking about gloves. I've actually bought some Simmond sort of two-in-one gloves. This outer glove, proper mountaineering glove, mate. That's what it says in the description anyway. So the outer glove is massive. It cinches up, fully waterproof, really thick, plenty of grip. So good for the mountain summits in the snowy weather. But then today, I've just been using the liners that came with them. So these aren't waterproof, but obviously they take some of that wind chill off your fingers. And they've been enough today. They are a bit damp. So I'm just going to leave them up there to dry. I've got these bad boys now to put on. And these do get warm. They're quite long as well. So they go right over your cuffs. Waterproof. Decent. Like them. Let's go have a little look out here. Well, lovely conditions. Starting to get quite a lot of snow drift up the side of the tent, which is why you need a true four season tent that goes straight to the floor. So I'm about to crack that kettle on, get myself a nice brew. The first brew of the camp is one of the best. And you've all heard of pot noodles. How about a bowl noodle? Pretty cool, eh? Hot and spicy. Can't read the rest of it. Where are they from? Product of Korea. I bought them from B&M. Bargain though. Well, I'll just boil two cups worth, enough for a brew, and hopefully that bowl noodle. So hopefully we have no issues with the gas. When I first got set up, I put the gas inside my sleeping bag just to keep nice and warm. I just need to find my electrical bag. Here it is. Then get my clipper. And I do feel like I'm cheating on my sticky toffee pudding latte a little bit because I've been kindly gifted these caramel latte Starbucks not by Starbucks though, my mate Ben. Cheers, Ben. Couldn't have done that any better if I tried. Poured the correct amount in the bowl noodle and then my brew's been brimmed. Trust me, these are nice. 
shit on any pot noodle anyway. It's all about them bowl noodles. Great flavour. Pretty spicy though. So although the sun's supposed to have set half an hour ago, that's probably the best visibility we've had all day. Can you see some lights coming on down there? So there's a few gusts coming through every now and then. I feel like I can hear the worst of it though, quite far away. So I think I am in a relatively sheltered spot for now. There we go, if I need to add it on later on, then I will do. I'm gonna watch half an hour YouTube. See what Liam's up to. Oh, it's a different world up here. So I'm watching Paul camping whilst I'm camping and he's watching me going camping whilst he's camping. <laughs> it's got a bit weird that, isn't it? <laughs> that is sick though. Cheers Paul for the mention. Really appreciate that. What are the chances of that? Legend. Let's have a little nosy out here then. Oh dear. Let's wait for one of them gusts. Right in my face. Right in my eyeball. So I've got a different jacket on to the down jacket that I'm wearing inside. This is a synthetic, it's more of a skiing jacket by Rab. I think it's the Chroma Cav. So I brought this knowing that it's gonna be snowy and I might wanna walk about outside the tent. Obviously I don't wanna get my down jacket wet at all. So this is just a backup and it's not the waterproof that I were wearing while I were hiking it. It never hurts to be over prepared. So we're well ventilated, more than halfway down. Listen, I love steak as much as the next bloke, but you need to try this stuff. It's actually pretty decent. So I've got some, whatever it is, Viv Era Plant Greek Style Kebab. And it actually does taste pretty much like Donna meat to me. A bit of cucumber, some sweet chili sauce, and then some yogurt and mint crucials. So I'm gonna sit back and enjoy this.
Well, I'll tell you something, that meal was pretty decent, you know. As I'm sure you might be able to hear, the weather started coming in. It's sort of sleet outside, I think. It didn't quite sound the same as it did earlier when it was snowing. The wind is certainly coming through now, though. Some pretty strong gusts, as you can hear. And what I am noticing is quite a bit of condensation in here. I think that's because the bottom of the fly sheet is packed out with snow. So there's just not much ventilation. I have got the vent open, as I always do. But I guess it's just one of them things, what can you do? I've got the sleeping bag in the bivvy, like I said earlier, so that'll help with the condensation on edge up bag. So I think I'm gonna try to get some sleep. It is only about half past 10. I suppose if I try going to sleep now, I've got more chance of getting a few hours here and there. I only need about five hours or so. It's a relatively short trip back down this fell to the car. And then I guess it's just about getting home. Bradford's looking nuts on the roads. I've seen some pictures tonight. I think we've had a amber warning over there, not yellow, for snow and ice. So that should be fun. Hopefully the roads down there where the car's parked aren't too bad. But I've got all season tyres, four wheel drive. We should be good. So anyway, I'm going to try and get some sleep. I've actually got some earplugs as well. So hopefully they'll come in handy. And I'll see you in the morning. Peace out in a bit. It's like that new then on cue, eh? Windy bastard. stood so well last night took a battery three o'clock this morning proper heavy gusts started coming in woke me up a few times so it's far too cold with that wind chill to be hanging about this morning so i'm going to get that tent packed away and I head back to the car Leave no trace, as always. You can see right out into Lake Windermere there. Now that was a good morning wake up call like no other. Oh, I feel alive now. That was some intense shit. There was a group of four hikers on the way up. Everyone's just crawling. So I just want to say, obviously going out in a yellow weather warning isn't exactly ideal. It's not the safest thing to do. So I wouldn't advise doing it unless 
obviously you've got the confidence to do it and you really need to have the gear to do it to be camping out in conditions like that because one wrong decision could be pretty bad so everything from the route that i planned it was an out and back i made sure the camping location was close to the car so worst case scenario if i had to bail out yeah it would have been difficult coming down in the dark or whatever but i probably would have managed it i had two head torches as well as a little backup i did have my bivy if the tent was to fail it's a Hilleberg Solo Black Label and as much as it is a tank and I really trust that tent with my life nothing's indestructible end of day it's some poles and a bit of fabric so you've got to make wise decisions there were 65 miles per hour plus gusts forecast on some of the higher summits the closest one to me was Fairfield that the Met Office let me check so it's quite a bit higher than where I camped Plus, I were in a sheltered spot, so I just wanted to make that clear. So I don't want people thinking, oh, it's getting a bit too carried away here, being a bit stupid. But I just wanted to test myself again. I like doing it. It's good fun, honestly. Makes you feel alive, I'm telling you. It's that wind this morning, unreal. I know I've already said it about five minutes ago, but yeah, it just wakes you up, man. I need to crack on me. I've got a two and a half, maybe three hour drive back to Bradford. And then I'm picking my two mates up and we're off for another camp tonight. So I'll be getting home, getting a bath, getting changed and I'll be going to pick them up. So I'm looking forward to that. It's going to be something completely different to this sort of camping. Something a little more relaxed because I think I deserve it. And I might even get a good night's kip because <laughs> last night wasn't great. I did fall asleep an hour or so here and there but nothing for any long period of time. Right guys, thank you for watching. I'm gonna wrap this one up here. So last night I did a wild camp on Nab Scar. That is one letter off being something that no bloke wants. I'll see you next time.